What's up guys? So today is the 23rd. Yeah, you can see that the 23rd. So it's been roughly a little over six months and 10-ish days post-op of uh, my septoplasty. So just as a reminder, I did get double terminate reduction in July 12th. So roughly, yeah, roughly six months ago. So there are a few things that I wanna talk about in this video. First and foremost, I did get septoplasty and that's not to be confused with rhinoplasty. So rhinoplasty is more for uh, cosmetics whereas septoplasty is more for functionality. So the reason why I got septoplasty is because I realized that I really just couldn't sleep at night. Uh, there will be nights where I would literally wake up like two, three hours into the night and then just gas for air. It, like, uh, <laughs> I was so confused. So I, I did reach out to my doctor a couple times. They, they suggested that I sign up for this service where they come to my house and then they would test my sleeping patterns for potential sleep apnea. I really didn't want to do that. <laughs> so I reached out to a local ear, nose, and throat clinic. And then from there, they pretty much diagnosed me and pretty much the rest is history. So yeah, the, uh, I guess to recap, I had two stints up my nose. Uh, post op and those the fir those were for three days and sleeping for those three days was probably the biggest hassle because i had to sleep with my mouth open in order to breathe and the issue was uh, my throat would get so dry that i wouldn't be able to breathe or because my throat would close up and air wouldn't get to go in so i think the first night i stayed up for i stayed up until 8 a.m and then I probably got like two hours of sleep. And then eventually I, I got a humidifier and that allowed me to go to sleep. So I highly recommend that you guys get a humidifier post out. Once my surgeon removed those two stents and then he cleaned out my nose of all like the fluids, I was able to breathe so, it's so weird to say that I'm able to breathe so clearly, but uh, um, there was literally like no blockage at all. Like. Imagine this was my nostril pre-op, and this was, this is what it felt like post-op. That's how much air I was getting through. <clears throat> but then I realized that like, I would slowly feel like some sort of blockage. And at first it felt like it was like a booger, but it wasn't. <clears throat> it was literally just like my nostril getting closed, closed up. So I would go back for a checkup and ask him, and he would pretty much just say, it's just swelling, swelling, blah, blah, blah. And that I would just need to wait because this is it's just normal. So I went back to check up like three times. And every time he said it was just swelling. I think the third time, which was also the last time, which was maybe like two-ish months after, he did recommend uh, possible radio frequency uh, surgery. And he said that compared to septoplasty, recovery would be a little quicker. And then I was like, oh, God, do I really want to go through that again? Then I pretty much just suggested, okay, let me just wait a couple months and then see what happened. Yeah, ever since two weeks post-op, my nose has been pretty much the same. So I don't know if you can tell. If I sniff, if I sniff, it's literally only this side going up and this side is not going up at all. I'm not sure uh, what that means, but I know that this side is actually getting blocked. So if I, versus, So there's like, it, it just feels like there's a booger stuck in here that I need to get out and that I can get out. But for some reason, it's, that's not the, that's not the case. I can't get it out. And so is what's happening or my conclusion is that it's, there's swelling here. So that's why the airflow isn't the same. But it's just so weird because every time the surgeon would go up and look at both of my nostrils, he said that both pathways are clear and and that surgery was successful, so I'm just still kind of confused. <laughs> but, 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 there's always a but. So I'm pretty much still sniffing a lot. That hasn't changed pre-op, post-op, essentially. But what has changed is that if I take a deep breath, like, I actually get in like really good air. Like it actually doesn't feel like there's a blockage at all, which is very weird to me. It's only when I'm sniffing. <laughs> And for some reason, I think I just built a habit out of it of just sniff it, sniffing, so. <laughs> so that's something that I've been working on slowly over time. 
whenever I'm doing like cardio or just working out in general, I'm trying to be uh, aware and take deeper breaths, like and avoid sniffing. Again, like I said, it's kind of it feels kind of like a habit. That's why I do it. Okay, so I guess pros of my surgery. I'm able to breathe. <laughs> All right. Deep breaths. I'm, get, I'm getting in a lot of air. Another pro. Um, I'm actually able to sleep throughout the night, like without waking up and gasping for air. So that's a huge plus. There are a lot of people that need actual sleeping sleep apnea machines that help them uh, sleep throughout the night because essentially they literally just stop breathing multiple times throughout the hour. That's just really bad. Or that, that was the biggest reason why I wanted surgery. An another pro is that it actually helped me lose weight really fast. I don't know if you guys seen my transformation video that I released a couple of months ago. Yeah, I was able to lose 12 pounds in six weeks with relative ease. I think that's the way to say it. And I did compare with my doctor and I looked it up online and it, there were studies shown that it does help with uh, weight loss and it's mainly because you're able to sleep which helps with recovery yeah so that was a big plus okay cons cons there are always cons biggest con I'm getting too much air sometimes so what does this mean this means that I'm more prone to sneezing and when I sneeze I sneeze um, this is because your pathways or your airways are more open so they're more prone to everything that's coming up essentially and going off of that because it's winter right now, I'm getting in a lot of dry air. And then sometimes if wind is blowing directly at me and I'm trying to breathe through my nose, I literally won't be able to breathe because it's just so much dry and cold air that it just like, it's just the sensation is so weird that it just blocks me or stops me from being able to breathe. Another con is that, like I mentioned before, I'm still sniffing. <laughs> yeah, I'm still sniffing. Yeah, I know this is a weird issue because I think I mentioned like those two weeks uh, post-op where I started sniffing again, essentially, and it felt like something was blocked. There was one day, one day, where it felt like the very first day where both of the stents were removed and I was able to breathe in like naturally and then no sniffing at all and a lot of air. Yeah, so I know that there's some weird issue going on. Yeah, but then after that one day, like it, it got swelling and then yeah, it's just weird. <laughs> I've been sniffing ever since. But one thing I want to mention is that because it's winter, I can't tell if it's because it's the dry air that's causing my sniffing or if it's because of the swelling in one of my nose or nostrils. So that's something that I have to wait until like spring or maybe summer to try to figure out as well. Okay, and now one of the topics I also want to discuss, which is empty nose syndrome. Yeah, when I was looking into why I'm still sniffing and why it feels like one of my nostrils is clogged up. Even though I did get surgery, I came across empty nose syndrome. Yeah, let me just read off some of the symptoms for it. Uh, nasal congestion, nosebleeds, dizziness, reduced mucus production, severe nasal dryness, reduced sensation of breathing, headaches, sensation of drowning, post-nasal drip, uh, problems with taste, insomnia, and tiredness. I think the only one that I'm actually might have is nasal congestion, nasal dryness, maybe, and insomnia, possibly. Yeah, it's kind of weird. And it also says that these symptoms can appear weeks to months to years after surgery. So, and they, researchers don't know the root cause of it at all. So, yeah <laughs> again we just have to wait until spring summer just to see how my nose is when it's not winter ah <sighs> yeah it's just weird because i remember the night before surgery i was looking up youtube videos and i came across this one guy saying how he regretted it completely because it like destroyed his life and made him tremendously depressed and in my head, I'm thinking, how does surgery that's supposed to help you breathe, which helps you sleep better at night, makes you extremely depressed, right? And how does it even ruin your life? That's that's the most, that was probably what I was most 
I, I wasn't even, I was curious and but I just remember like I think I stayed up like an hour after watching that video just contemplating whether or not I should cancel the procedure and I, I was really about to do it yeah but then I just told myself like don't think too much about it just go through it it's, it's either that or just suffer with sleep apnea yeah, so so some of you guys might be asking do I have regrets no yeah I don't think so I mean whether or not I got surgery I will surgery I would have had the sniffs anyways right but at least now I don't suffer with sleep apnea I'm, and I'm able to sleep throughout the night um, when I do sleep at least so yeah if you guys have any more questions feel free to drop them down below I probably miss a lot of stuff um, I'm being honest with you guys <laughs> and I'll get to them and if you're new to this channel make sure to like comment and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm, I don't know, just say something funny. <laughs> and follow me through my food adventures. Yeah. Until next time. Maybe next surgery. Next nose surgery. Who knows? Peace.